All right. <clears throat> Welcome to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee meeting of December 17, 2018. This is a meeting that was rescheduled. Uh, it was originally scheduled for tomorrow, which would have been on Tuesday uh, the 18th, and we moved it up, seeing that this is the end of the year. Uh, we've got a pretty full um, Board of Commissioners work agenda, work session agenda coming up, and so we had to accelerate this. That being said, we've got a pretty full agenda today. It's tight. Uh, we've got less than about an hour to get through this matter. Some of it we'd be able to decide, some of it we may be able to just sort of acknowledge, and, and some of it we may get um, actual decisions. Uh, that being said, Commissioner Wolf here, I know this is your last official meeting. Yes. Um, and so we, we obviously, anything you say, uh, we're going to regard uh, in high esteem, but we also want to be sensitive to your time. So, sure. Miguel, first yes. up. Let's yes, sir. The, the first item on the agenda today is our transit services um, division. They have an update on the <coughs> outreach program. They also have some information related to the bus routes. Uh, uh, we have got better definition on those, and we also will engage in a discussion related to the bus fare. Okay. So, uh, Eric, if you could get what, what point of what, what, real quick, um, uh, time to mention meeting minutes. Do we have any from last time that we need to adopt or we need to yes, push that out? All right. Oh, uh, has everybody had a chance to take a look at the last meeting minutes? I know, again, because we moved the meeting. Have y'all had a chance to take a look at them? Is there any disagreement or anything? Comments? Any edits? Need a motion to adopt or accept the meeting minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Sorry. Go on. Continue. Okay. Okay. We're going to start out <coughs> this morning with an update on our outreach outreach program. As all of you know, for the last six months or so, uh, the collaborative firm has been our partner in. Uh, going out to the public related to connect Douglas, our new bus service, and our other services. Um, one thing I'd like to say this morning that uh, working with the collaborative firm has been a very positive experience. Michael Hightower, Danielle Crow, Danielle Hoover, uh, they've been very responsive to our needs and, and suggestions, and I feel like we've made a lot of progress in, in letting the public <coughs> know what we're doing. And having said that, I'm going to turn everything over to my high tower. And, and you'll give us an update on where we've been and hopefully where we can go from here. Uh, what you have uh, before you right now is a hard copy in, uh, uh, of the document. But I want to just first say very quickly thank you. Uh, Commissioners uh, Robinson, Mr. <coughs> Mulcahy, I saw you leaving, and uh, I was uh, uh, I like what Commissioner Robinson said at your at your retirement. He, the way he described you was pretty accurate. <laughs> very quickly, we won't take a long time. This document here, uh, this first document, very briefly, and uh, Miguel, thank you as well as your, your support, and Mr. County Administrator. This very quick, uh, very quick uh, uh, document we're going to go over. Uh, I'm going to have uh, Ms. Hoover come over and kind of. Kind of briefly scan over the, uh, uh, the the year in review, and but the most important part is where we go in nineteen, and um, um, uh, so I think that's what we're going to have in, in the other documents. So uh, we appreciate y'all's y'all's uh, involvement this year. I think obviously Miguel, you and Gary, y'all's investments in this area has really meant a lot for this county, and um, uh, the two of them will stay back for the ten o'clock. I will not be here for that. They be here for the ten o'clock just in case they have any question. <coughs> So, uh, at this time, uh, uh, Danielle Hoover, who also, uh, uh, it's kind of like both of them, Danielle Crow spends too much time out here, and Danielle, Danielle Hoover lives in Douglas County. She lives in Commissioner, uh, uh, oh my God, another blank one. Mitchell. Commissioner Mitchell's district. And so, uh, you want to come up and kind of go over the agenda stuff that you want to talk about? And then I will close it out if there are any questions. brief overview um, of what Michael was uh, just referring to. I first want to say hello, good morning. Um, I recently joined the collaborative firm, as Michael mentioned. I'm Director of Communications and uh, Public in Involvement, and I am a, a newly Douglas County resident, so I'm in Commissioner Mitchell's district. So not only what we're doing involves um, the citizens and constituents of Douglas County, but that includes me. So I voted for the first time in Douglas County this uh, past elections. 
So I appreciate being here for multiple reasons. So just quickly, as you know, phase one and two of our uh, partnership here in Douglas County. Uh, phase one was the branding services uh, for the multimodal transportation. Phase two, in which we are currently uh, underway and wrapping up, um, not only included public involvement for the CMAQ grant process, education, communication um, for the multimodal services, and uh, for the fixed bus routes. Some quick highlights. Um, and Danielle's done an amazing job um, with the current uh, phases. Um, not only has she had her hand in um, each a phase, but she's um, pretty much solely responsible for all the initiatives in phase two. So as you see here, some of the objectives, um, just to kind of breeze through, rebrand the ride shares Connect Douglas, enhance awareness of existing services, gain public input on the proposed fixed, excuse me, fixed route bus services. So we can just quickly go through some slides of these highlights. The bus wrap unveiling was successful, um, and it, it looks amazing. Um, and uh, there were a lot of po uh, positive feedback on uh, just the look and feel. The public hearing grant acceptance, as you know, October 16th, and then again November 6th, most recently. The open house, which launched um, Connect Douglas, was October 23rd of this year. And that also previewed the new logo, which Daniel also had a part in. The social media platforms, um, from the uh, initiation of the social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram, it has been nothing but positive. There have been no negative trends, and engagement has been up um, with each additional post. And that is solely responsible um, uh, to TCF efforts and um, Daniel's initiatives. As you see here, not only photos of open houses, et cetera, Gary, you're showcasing one of these, um, as well as engagement. There have been lit drops. Um, here are some of the locations um, of uh, collateral to feature Connect Douglas and the rideshare services. There have also been community kiosks, uh, most recently two in uh, November and one in uh, most recently in December. And that not only housed um, information on Connect Douglas, but there was interaction with um, citizens and public. So there's feedback, visibility, and branding opportunities. And most recently, the open houses in each district. So it was an opportunity, not only had it, uh, it was publicized through various channels, lit drops, et cetera, and then housed in each of the districts. Um, uh, and Danielle, was present at each um, engagement. Some of the photos um, on social media were part of these uh, open houses. And since it was in my district, I stopped by Blue Rose. Um, and uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell was uh, there gracious enough to host out one of those shows <coughs> as well. So a 30 to 50,000 foot view, our work plan approach for 2019 is broken down in several phases. Obviously, um, most important is this first 90 days. It is the launch of the bus, um, uh, uh, bus launch. So that January to March phase, we're developing strategic public involvement and communications plans to launch Connect Douglas. So Danielle's done an amazing job of reaching the community, as Gary mentioned, and um, informing the community of what's currently been going on. So we're going to expand upon those efforts to not only reach um, designated communities who are already in the know, keep them informed, but reach uh, outlying um, communities whom we may not have touched multiple times or may not just be as aware. So that January to March is very crucial and critical to us. And so efforts are going to be expanded upon. That April to June, so basically the 30-30 um, in the remainder of the year, that April to June um, opportunity will create metrics, ridership experience. So that launch is in April. Now we have the opportunity to see what works and troubleshoot, um, expand what does, and quickly fix what doesn't. So that April to June is an opportunity to continue on visibility, branding, education, and outreach efforts, but also now introduce reporting ridership experiences and see how we can expand or tweak what we can, um, needs to be tweaked and then report feedback to you all. The remainder of the year, July to December, not only are there reoccurring activities, such as web, um, web updates, social media, media pitches, outreach, education, et cetera, 
but that July to December is for the unknown. So you all are very progressive. That unknown is basically us providing the services for various projects and project-specific communications and public involvement plan um, to also include the other uh, ridership opportunities and programs, such as van pool, et cetera. Um, and it's also an opportunity to report findings as well. So if we need um, to tweak in that April to June phase or something that may be surprising, for example, if we need to expand an online survey or include other lit drops um, in various areas or some more community outreach to behavior, behavioral health, uh, education facilities, et cetera, we would know from April to June what we are lacking and continue it on um, in July to December, as well as include and enhance other projects um, that are on the docket for the remainder of the year that we may not know as of today. And Daniel will go over the various tactics that you see in front of you of the 2019 work plan um, and uh, some of its columns and initiatives, um, not only throughout the first uh, initial 90-day phase, but the remainder of the 2019 year. Be be before we switch, come on up, Daniel, but that's fine. Um, Again, we got to stay on, on on task here. Mr. Wolf here, uh, or Gary, I'll, I'll start with one you went. Gary, any, based on what we just heard so far, do you validate what's happened in the past and sort of the framework in which you're looking at? Absolutely. As I mentioned, I think they've done a fantastic job these, these last six six months. Uh, we've gotten a lot of uh, positive feedback from the community, and even though the crowds at the, the four uh, public outreach meetings that we had were, weren't as large as we would hoped. Uh, the people who were there uh, seemed very interested, very positive, and asked a lot of really good questions about it. And we've had a number of discussions about where we want to go in these next three to four months as well. So I, I feel like we're on task, on target. Okay. Uh, the, the two, uh, I, I guess, January to March, uh, which is sort of lead up to the launch, and then the the 90 days thereafter, I guess it was through June, um, I guess it's the typical mark. I mean, you, you got to ramp up and then you've got to measure over time. Um, you're on board with that and how to, how to, I guess operationally we'll have metrics that are being compiled. That's more of an internal for you and Miguel. And then there's also for, I guess they'll help us translate that for the constituents or citizens. Is that yes, what, what I'm hearing? That's totally correct. Okay. Commissioner Mulk here. No comment. No comment. No. Okay. Everything good. We're good. Um, time frame. Um, um. Commissioner, we, we have a second part of that. Uh, I said. Tomorrow. Uh, um, I want to make sure I. Uh, we we got we got still on task. So mm -hmm. we're good. No, we're good. We're good. All right. So that being said, um, I want to keep this moving. I want to go ahead and at least make a recommendation forward to the board commission based on what we have, just for further consideration. If there are any objections. Mark? No? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'd like to make a motion to make the recommendation to adopt and accept this recommendation for the collaborative firm for the year of 2019. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Done. Thank you, guys. we got to keep Thank moving. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Would you all keep moving? Okay. Uh, the, uh, the next item is we, we uh, started probably a couple of meetings ago in discussion about the, the bus fares and the bus routes in particular. I, there's been uh, additional definition. Um, I think, uh, I don't know whether we have any uh, follow-up beyond what we talked about last time, Gary, in terms of stops and the routes themselves. The we're good to go with, with the routes. Um, we, we've spent a lot, a lot of time working on them the last two months. Uh, we've ridden, ridden them a lot, and basically we've got them down to where we feel like we can start with these routes. The, the one item that we really haven't tied down yet is, is exactly where we're going to connect our Route 40 with, with Cobb. Those discussions are ongoing as Cobb evaluates the, the, their own routes but um, hopefully we'll have a resolution to that quickly. In general, we do know that that stop's going to be somewhere around the Elvis Center Church there on, on Six Flags okay. Drive. Um, and also, 
hopefully in sometime in, in late January, early uh, February, we would like to make a formal presentation of the final routes uh, to the Board of Commissioners and also uh, we're planning on uh, meeting with the Douglas City Council to let them see what we're doing okay. as well. So we um okay, so that's um council and Dr. Michon for Gallery the chairman the chair of the Chair So do, do we share anything with them now or from time to time? I mean I, I gave them an update about two weeks ago. Okay. So we belabor. All right, so we're so we're okay with the routes is what I'm hearing. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned the, the next item uh, was the discussion related to the bus fares. We started that a couple of meetings ago and essentially we uh, we looked at uh, adjoining communities and similar type operations and uh, looked at what their fares were and uh, we, we had discussion about whether it be uh, two dollars uh, one way or whether it be uh, 250 and that's pretty much where we kind of honed in where we bracketed the fare right. and so we, we're going to need to hope, uh, get that a little tighter to make a recommendation at some point as to what the fare is going to be and being that this is uh, Commissioner Mulcair's last meeting uh, it would be appropriate to have uh, uh, the item finalized if we could. Okay. Well that would you like to go? No oh, sure. Uh, Two dollars. Uh, <laughs> I had an interesting uh, in my community meeting, I had an interesting conversation with a lady who was a train operator in New York for 12 years, and uh, she pitched 250. She said it's worth it. I, I don't disagree, uh, but if we start at two dollars, we have a means and, and ability to uh, increase it to 250 at a, at a year after a year or a two-year period. I think the two dollars would would would. Uh, Accelerate uh, ridership and uh, accommodate, you know, more early ridership, more participation. Uh, but I'm I'm good with either number. Yeah. Mark, you got any comments on this? Oh, that's right. You're not. No, no, no. no I'm, 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 it's okay. Um, to that point, and uh, yeah, there was some. Uh, <coughs> Eric, tell me if um, I believe I had conversations, at least during my open house, where uh, um, there was conversations with citizens who was at least they're probably anecdotal it wasn't formal where um, it was expressed that 250 was acceptable um, did, did you have any have we compiled anything formally I know it's like an informal we asked citizens and I know that was not the, the primary objective but did you get any feedback we did get feedback it was very informal we, we didn't mark down who said what during the meeting the, the question we asked was, what do you think of $2.50 as a fare for a one-way trip? <clears throat> we really didn't get any pushback okay. on that. I, I think that would be acceptable with, with the public. However, <clears throat> from my own personal standpoint, I agree with Commissioner Mulcair and, and what he's saying. I, at least for a start, I, I like the $2 myself. Okay. Um, I'll weigh in. And, and again, we're going to pick back up where our conversation. I'm going to be quick about this. Um, there is the cost to connect to the broader system, right? You've got 30 some odd years um, of, of growth um, in the broader Metro Atlanta as it relates to fares. And it didn't always start at 250, but it grew over time. We're connecting into a system with a, with, with sort of a, a cost load, right? And so I, I get there's two parts to this. Yes, getting people to adopt. The early adopters get people to adopt our system but this is sort of a pent-up demand this is not something new to the world and I think to your point you didn't get much pushback but the 250 I mean that's the rate it's cheaper than taxis it's cheaper than uber for the most part to move around with inside your county I can attest to that personally so I, I think just having access to it will do what it needs to do but I, I'm okay with that, that, that conversation the other part of that and I know this madam chair was concerned about this was our seniors so who are we really serving back to seniors? And I won't get into the voucher. We'll put that, we'll, that'd be new, new next year. But, but specifically, um, I talked to some seniors and you were at there and they're like, they, they prefer a dollar. So I'm gonna cut two different things. Seniors like the dollar. In other words, uh, the lady explained to me, our citizen, she says, look, I always got a dollar. And I can keep moving. You'll get more of us getting on board, but we don't like to break change. 
right? We, we want to get on, keep moving. We got plenty of dollars no <coughs> in the system. So the question is, in giving this discount, who, who do you think is more important? I'd, I'd rather get the full load of the 250 and be compatible with the system that some of our citizens are going to go into a uh, connect the cob. So there's a price differential between two dollars and two fifty. Go down, they got to come back two fifty back this way. <coughs> I want to be consistent with that, but I, I think um, our seniors are, are more important for the discount, right? So if I had to ever do full low two fifty and then have the dollar for seniors, but that's just my thought. Well, looking uh, at this. The federal program, this, the subsidy that, that they encourage is to go to 50% of the normal fare for seniors, so at least during peak hours. Mm -hmm. right. So if, if that were the case, uh, <coughs> one consideration would be instead of just going during peak hours to that fare, to make it consistent and go to half the normal fare for seniors. Now, whether that should be or 250. Obviously, the consensus is getting closer around two dollars. The the, uh, the value in the 250, as we discussed earlier, is the fact that it matches what a joining community mm -hmm. it is it is, and and it'd be consistent with the expectation. They uh, are our uh, patrons here would uh, go to uh, particularly on a on a transfer. And they would go into the Cobb system paying uh, two or two fifty on our side. Coming back, they have to pay Cobb two fifty to 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 make the return trip. So it's not going to be a clean uh, even even dollars. They're they're going to need to pay um, their their going fare there. So for for what it's worth. Um, that there would be consistency if we went to, to the 250. Consistency. That's, that's the best argument for the 250. It's okay. compatibility. Yeah. All right. So you want to get a recommendation? Are you prepared to? Are you settled to make a decision? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So we just want to focus on just the um, normal fare. Mm -hmm. We want to come back later. Or we want to settle the seniors as well. I think we need. We if we can settle both of them today, that'd be great. A dollar. I mean, uh, frame it for us for do what the federal says up to a dollar. We can come back later. Does that give you time? Uh, I. But yeah. If, yeah, if, yeah if, if, if the floor is up, and may I make a motion? Please. Absolutely. Just, frame all right. I'll, <coughs> I recommend that we set our uh, standard fare for a one-way trip at two dollars and fifty cents, and pro provide a discount to seniors and disabled full time throughout the day at one dollar. So moved. Yes, sir. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Yes, sir. Gil, keep us moving. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, something that we started discussing a couple meetings ago as well, the pavement evaluation. Yes. And uh, we, we went through a presentation uh, by Moreland Al Altabelli at the last meeting. Uh, we requested that they provide us a proposal to do uh, one of those uh, particular uh, approaches to pavement evaluation. They've done that. And uh, they're here today again. Uh, we can, we can, uh, if we want to hear from them, uh, please. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, briefly. Yes. Yeah. Buddy, you yes. Come on up. All it's right. fine. Thanks. Again, my name is Buddy Bratton, and it's Mike Malcolm. Mike will be the one, if approved, will be the one managing the work for the pavement evaluation. Mm -hmm. We gave you three options. We gave you the, I guess I call it the Volkswagen, the Ford, and the Cadillac. And, um, what we presented here is the uh, Ford, uh, a system that's um, nationally known, that has support, um, provides the ability for Miguel and his staff to do what they want to do later and play a lot of, once the evaluation is done, they can play what if games and they can build the history of your pavement performance throughout your county. Um, I think what we quoted um, to do the evaluation for just the pavement ratings for um, the, the paved roads was 88, the unpaved was uh, 4,800, and then training, basic training to your staff to show them how the software works, how to do the rating was 7,200. Um, we would encourage you, um, 
that if you want to take this over over time, which I hope you do, from my old operations guy, that you send probably two people that you know are going to stay committed to the county to the training in Colorado State. It's a week long. They'll get the in-depth training and be able to work with your GIS people and connect it all into the system. Um, and the software is fairly reasonable to buy. It, you, two licenses, I think, Mike, for a thousand dollars. So um, I think if, if I were in your shoes, that would be the way I would go. Yes, and, and one of the things that we would have liked to be able to do is also get cores of, of uh, representative for pavement cores on, on the roads. Okay. Uh, because that is an item that, that plays into when you develop, when you go from the concept uh, approach to the project approach. You need that level of information. However, uh, it, I don't think we are uh, able to, to move that element of it forward at this time. So uh, I think uh, based on, on the proposal from Moreland, uh, I'd say that, that that's probably where we are now, to be able to move forward with just a basic uh, pavement evaluation component. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can take up the element of additional <coughs> uh, coring and other parameters that can be implemented into uh, into the software uh, later on, whether we do that in-house or some other way, we can take that away. Okay. So hold it. So we got equipment to do core the boring. Is that what I'm hearing? I don't think we do. No, I, we no. would need to, we would need to to get that equipment to be able. To I got you. Would we do that in-house, or we would probably. Do yeah. I heard in-house, and I wanted to make sure that, yeah. that it wasn't already here, so we would have to come back. So that's. To your point, another date, another time. So, this proposal, as as presented, doesn't accomplish what we needed, which is our first pass. Let's refresh. Let's see where things stand based on it's been years since we really did this. We know it's sort of just a it's a baseline. It's right. not to say it's supposed to be perfect. That's not what our objective is. That correct. It, it, that? it would certainly do that. And buddy, if you would, uh, in terms of the timeline, uh, can you? Give us a sense of that. We'll have two people on it full time. It'll take roughly between five and six months for those two people to do this. Mm -hmm. um, we'll try to accelerate it. I know it, that's an urgency issue for you, but I just don't feel like you'll end up getting the results that you want if we have more than two people to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I would offer an alternative on the, and I didn't put it in here, um, but if you, once you decide on what list that you want to do for resurfacing for the next upcoming year, those may be the roads you might want to come back and want to core because it helps you make that determination on what treatment method you may want to use. So nothing to be discussed, just throw that option out there at you. That way over time, eight, nine, ten years, you can build up your core information. Five, six months? I mean, I, it, it wasn't, I mean, though it's important, it's the quarry is not that urgent that we don't want to compromise quality. So uh, it, we're not just sort of a shotgun through and we, we just well, great. That is true, Commissioner, and, and essentially, uh, because of the timing of, of, of this uh, component, yes. we've already programmed what we are going to do I in the spring into the summer. Okay. So, so we're covered for that. This would uh, come in ahead of our next round of contracts. So okay. it would be rather timely, even mm -hmm. after yeah. five, six months. Yeah. Mark, yeah. Mark, you okay with that? Yes, sir. Again, overall timing as far as we lay out our schedule? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. We're just ready for 2020. Yes, well, again, not to belabor, this is something we have talked um, uh, to the full board of commissioners, and we want to just go a little bit deeper. Miguel, are you satisfied with this proposal? I am. I'd like to make a motion, please. Yes, I make a motion that we uh, uh, enter into a contract for pavement evaluation with Marlon Altavelli in the sum not to exceed uh, strictly for pavement evaluation uh, in, a, in the amount not to exceed $101,045. All right. Okay. Any discussion? <coughs> okay, motion and second. All right. I'll call the question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, next item on the agenda is uh, one of our uh, construction projects that are underway already, the ITS uh, improvements. There is uh, a change order request that we will, uh, I'm asking for a recommendation to the board. This is not an item that is on the agenda for today or tomorrow before the next cycle in, in January, but uh, our uh, 
project uh, that is doing uh, ITS fiber optic expansion mm -hmm. uh, along 78 and, and 92. Yes. Uh, they they ran into a situation where where the plants intended for them to cross the street. It, the slope is too steep. They're not going to be able to do that there. So they have to carry uh, the fiber optic another 300 feet down the road and then cross over. And that is going to entail uh, switching out a, a pole and uh, doing directional bore and, and conduit for 300 feet at a cost of $8,051.49. Mr. Smoker, you know, just want to do an administrative yeah. concurrence because that concur. Yeah. Okay. Um, do a motion for the administrative conference so we can have it for the record. So yeah. moved. Okay. Second. All in favor of the administrative concurrence and the amount that is proposed, say aye. 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 All opposed? It carries. Yeah. Keep going. All right. Okay. Um, the next item uh, is a discussion. Um, we started last at the last meeting regarding the comprehensive transportation plan update. There is, a, as I mentioned at the last meeting, there is a, a, a possibility of additional funding at the federal level mm -hmm. uh, for us to take advantage of. One of the elements that, uh, that I failed to highlight for you at the last meeting uh, that I think would be advantageous is to dedicate some of that funding to getting additional field information traffic camps and the like at key intersections that we're trying to move forward uh, in terms of design or get them into the system as projects, we would be able to add that to this exercise. And so at the last meeting we discussed going to a uh, 500,000, not to exceed 500,000 total with 400,000 being federal and uh, 100,000 being uh, local, we have the ability to go to 625,000 with 125,000 being local and 500,000 being federal. And so that would be uh, my recommendation that uh, uh, we, uh, we need to let uh, the Atlanta Regional Commission know what the desires of, of the county are. Um, so my recommendation would be that we that we increase uh, the contract or the agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission not to exceed six hundred and twenty five thousand total with five hundred thousand being uh, federal funds and one twenty five million. Can we, can we do this? Do you recall how we did this last time? I mean, a while ago, this this is the update, right? This is the update. So there would have been about five years ago we did it? Correct. I just mm -hmm. don't recall. Do yeah, I don't, I don't really. Okay. To be honest with you. you don't just, any thoughts on that, of the increase? No, but it wouldn't be on uh, this this month's agenda. No. You know, this appropriation, re recommended appropriation, would be, I guess, in <coughs> January. Something. It would be in January. Yeah. Right, but the ARC is responsible. Do you have any recommendations? Should we? Is it ARC? Do we? we or do they uh, facilitate a contract? How does it that, work? That is correct. Work? They, mm -hmm. uh, we enter into a contract with the Atlanta Regional Commission to do the update, and they provide the funding. Yep. Uh, but we need to let them know what uh, the county is willing to match, and that determines how much federal funding uh, attaches to it. Mm -hmm. um, Wait until I, I'm, su I'm supportive uh, of it, uh, but we have a new commissioner coming That's in was, yeah, who, yeah. who will actually have to make the vote on the uh, recommendation for appropriation. Yep. And so I, I think it should, uh, if, if we were to vote today, I would abstain. So uh, uh, it would probably be best to put to uh, uh, delay it you know, until uh, my replacement is on the committee. Would you be opposed to the full amount, though? Just for oh, the no. no. Okay, so. no. I'm good in carrying that. So, but do you need a decision before the end of the year? I don't need a decision uh, from the entire board before the end of the year. But I do need to let the Atlanta Regional Can we give Commission know concur concur what we're yes, concurrence. Just for, for, to give him direction, yes. recognize the proposal. Still have we still have to move forward with the new commission in the new year. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Make your motion for just your administrative concurrence, just to give them acknowledgement. Okay. So. Yeah, the, the motion would be to uh, 
uh, to let the Atlanta Regional Commission know that the county is supportive of a $125,000 match uh, for, for the uh, Comprehensive Transportation Plan update and uh, for them to go ahead and prepare the contract that would come up for action by the BOC in January. I'll make a second on that. Okay. Any further discussion? With that motion is second, I call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So we carry. What? Bold zero? Mark step two. Okay. All right. You got that, Jess? Yes, sir. All right. Keep going, please. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a discussion on a uh, capital transportation fund uh, policy. Uh, what else, and I know this is important. What else we got on our agenda? I just, we just have a, uh, beyond this, we got a uh, discussion on Anna Wakey Road and State Route 92 intersection, mm -hmm. reprioritizing that, and a project update on the multi-use trail. Is that the 12 mile? <coughs> yes. Okay. You want to cover that real quick? Yeah. Please. Okay, we'll get that on you. Uh, where we are with that project is we're in the concept development stage uh, <laughs> and uh, for the overall and the design stage for phase one. The, the overall 11.7 mile extension uh, from Boundary Waters to uh, Sweetwater State Park is um, quite a size sizable project and the funding that was originally allocated is not going to be sufficient to, to carry us all the way through and so what uh, in the discussions with the uh, Georgia Department of Transportation what we've agreed is that we will do the concept development and the environmental work for the entire length as we originally intended but then the design the project will be phased for construction bite size chunks so we can actually begin the process of getting into construction so that's where we are all right let's stick all right so there's concept there's design and then there's actually development right? did that's i just right. hear those phases yes so concept we're already in how much we spent to date on that I mean, what are we what's that cost um roughly i, I believe the the contract on that is 1.6 1.6 million we so haven't spent that but that's that sounds right yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the design is what was what that? Well, that, that includes the that includes design it. for phase one as well. Right. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and I heard you just say it went up. Now, why did it go up or why is it the, different? The construction costs are what's it's going on. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the PE, uh, well, one of, one of the things that, uh, that they ran into is that there are a lot of um, environmentally sensitive areas where the trail was going to go through initially okay and right. so they have to deviate the route is going to be different right. now to avoid and this is in discussion with uh, the georgia department of transportation right. their environmental team right. uh, they they made recommendations that we stay away from certain areas so we had to deviate so the route and that more mm -hmm. um, cemeteries or bat caves or um, uh, wetlands, wetlands and all of the and stuff like that. Archaeologically significant Got sites. It. All right. So, Mr. Walker, weigh in. Right well, uh, <coughs> what we're talking about is the the construction costs are, are escalating, yes. not the design. Correct. Okay. The design costs. I think we probably expected that. Mm -hmm. Really. Naturally. Right. You know, two years ago we expected uh, expected that. The only thing we were locked into was the uh, concept design and, and the environmental study mm -hmm. and so forth. So uh, we don't have a decision point on this. This is just more and more of the update. It's an update, right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, with your acquiescence, uh, I would like to continue to stay close, uh, stay close to this issue uh, after after my retirement. Yep. And, and assist any way that I can as, as a citizen or uh, garnering and grassroots support. Absolutely. So 11 miles. From Boundary Wars um, over or up to Sweetwater State Park, um, we, but we're full, we have um, full funding for the design. Yes, right? mm -hmm. that's our not capital transportation fund, right? All right. I'm, now, source. Let, let me be clear. Right, we have full funding for the concept for the entire length, and we have full funding for the design for Phase One. We may not be able to do the final design on all the phases. That would not. What's system. the cost? Yeah. What do you estimate? What's the framework? I just, for the record, for the update. 
at this point, it is it is unknown. We're hopeful that what we have will carry us, but we haven't had a a detailed discussion with a consultant as to how much they're not going to be able to do within the budget. Can we get an answer on that at our next meeting? Just an update. Sure. Mark, can we make sure we just, we just want an update? Mm -hmm. Would it be helpful to have a consultant in, or would that be overkill? Um, I would be open to it. Just I would. Or at a time is probably. Yeah, I would try to get the information no. from them, and then we can have a discussion sure. and bring them in if we if we need. Okay. Yeah, I did cover this with the incoming commissioner. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else on that? I appreciate the update. Uh, okay. No, nothing else on that. All right. Back up. Go back to your. All right. To your. Let's do Anuaki's floss because you mm -hmm. talked about that. That's okay. money. So let's right. talk about that real quick. All right. So um, this is a SPLOS project, as you know, that initially was listed as a um, kind of a realignment potentially and uh, of 92 and Anuaki, and uh, we did a preliminary concept analysis and it, it came up at about a six million dollar expenditure. Right. And so we we have. Uh, uh, We've got a number of projects that we're looking into uh, getting consulting advice on and, and a consulting team in. This is a project that will need to define the scope uh, before we can put it out for design services. So one, one element would be uh, potentially are we looking still to move the project as a full realignment uh, and, and the scope that that entails or as an intersection uh, improvement, uh, possibly, or uh, perhaps we leave it uh, until we get other projects uh, done and we see where the budget is. I, I thought, let me back up real quick, this was what, about $6 million to your point? Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe our last conversation was that this, it wasn't as important in the scheme of things, and so it fell in priority and um, it was at least the implied um, understanding that we would take that remaining amount. I mean, I know there was expenses that had incurred to this point on whatever we were working on, mm -hmm. and, and, and repurpose that within this loss list on mm -hmm. the list at further down. Did you? I agree. I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, I, while I, I get it, you know, if I think about District 2, if I think about our priorities along the way, you, you, you can't do everything. And I, I think right. if we had to optimize our dollars, especially in that area, it's like, yeah, that's a nice to have, but, right, we've got some other um, areas. So, um, uh, yeah, I would, I would add to your, your comment. Uh, I, I think uh, the realignment would be a very questionable value. The value would be in signali signalizing. Uh, the uh, help me out, Riverside uh, intersection with uh, with 92. There'd be more value in signalizing that than realigning it, in, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Make sure we capture that just for that state because um, um, again, the backup on Riverside goes all the way. Everybody's trying to make that left turn going right. You just keep on going. Um, I know there was some opposition to having three lights right there. Yeah. You know, uh, 166 in, in, in Fairburn. Um, obviously, Riverside has its pause, and then you've got the Adawaki 92. Uh, but I, I just think, just not right now. I think we have other things that we can get done in, in this blast and people in McDonald's. And so, not that it's not important, not that the people to come out that area. It's just that in the scheme of things, it's, there's other stuff. But I just think yeah. that that would be cost. And I, and I think, like the culvert that we were able to accomplish, mm -hmm. and some other things out of that dollar. So, um, I'd like to suggest that we. You know, get a framework of what would it take to bring the current phase to completion, wherever you are, concept, and just pin it. And uh, maybe a future time, a future sploss, and then we move everything that's on the list, Mark, up, and specifically those mm -hmm. things that are uh, of safety that we've talked and about. I think that's that Miguel's point. Although we did discuss it, then a decision hadn't been made right. to okay. shit on it. Um, okay, can we well, make we it? Did talk about it. Okay, let's, let's, let's be yeah. clear about this. Yeah, I'm, I make a motion that we delay uh, forward movement, uh, uh, except to the point of finishing up what we're in, in, in the process of doing exactly right now, uh, but of uh, delaying any, any further work on that and reallocating the funding. Make that a motion. I want to work on the concept plan. Yeah. Second. 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 Second
So we're going to complete the concept plan, pay the consultants as is, as we always do. We, that's not it. Well, we, ha we haven't engaged a consultant yet. We were developing that, so, so really we have no expenditures. In okay. I make the motion that we bill it. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Now, with that motion, that discussion, we did acknowledge the fact that they will move everything on the project list up further. Is that true? Yes. Uh, including <coughs> those things that um, are, are of safety nature that was further down the list. That was good, Mark? Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, yeah, a brief remark. I don't yeah. buy the, uh, the uh, concentration of signalization yeah. uh, so many in a row. I mean, hell, that's what coordinating is all about. You, co you coordinate those signals, traffic control, yeah. computerization, and so forth. So you know, so the fact that oh we can't we're, there's going to be too many signals too close together that's that's kind of BS. So. Well, well, to that point, um, Commissioner, it, it, but that was the, the prior director who gave us that. that mm -hmm. So I won't it's just not extended to you. Was this whole notion that that's the state route and they dictate the rules and you, we haven't you know, uh, and so it was one of those like I hear you. I just want to go on record. That's all, all right. No, no, but I, I mean, yeah. should, should we push back? I mean, Miguel, well, what are your thoughts? Well, no, frankly, the, the, the DOT has a certain criteria that they go by. In fact, at one point, uh, the, the distance between signals was 660 feet. That, that was their, their benchmark. That over the last several years, probably about right. as of two, three years ago, that has gone to a thousand feet. So they, they like to see signals no closer than a thousand feet. So it's arbitrary is what you're saying. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's evolved. I'll, yeah, I'll put it that so way. there's maybe some room. So duly noted yeah, yeah. signalization, yeah. maybe it may if we can get to the place of, of lights, but I, I, I uh, get to that place. So duly noted. So are we stopping where we're at now, which is pre, uh, pre concept lane? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fair okay. Right. We're leaving it with, with, the, with the framework by Commissioner Mole here is that if we ever pick this back up, we're looking at signalization as opposed to a realignment. Is yeah. that correct? That's correct. We're mentioning a couple of okay. options of path. You got that, Mark? Yes, sir. All right. Miguel, come on. One more. Okay. Yeah, come on. All right. Well, through. The, the last item on the agenda is a capital transportation fund policy yes. uh, discussion. Yep. Uh, I, I uh, supplied a draft. Uh, of the uh, yep. policy, and, and I've had some additional uh, or some comments since then. So I have some additional information that uh, to, to be considered. Uh, and I'll yes. this as, actually, second page is what uh, what's been suggested that maybe we need, we should or should consider having uh, more detailed information as to what types of projects could be funded or should be funded out of the fund. Okay. Excuse so, me. I don't know to what extent... Uh, we've got about five minutes to finish this up, and, and we can, we've got a transition for obviously our... Mm -hmm. So can you just read it for the record so people can hear it, because we're filming this, okay. what this policy is, and then we can go into a quick discussion. All right. So, so the, uh, the, the policy as it stands now is that transportation projects tend to be large capital expenditures that require substantial funding allocations that cannot be readily incorporated into the general fund budget. The Capital Transportation Fund was established by the Board of Commissioners in order to provide a reserve of funds independent of the general fund that can be allocated to advanced transportation project initiatives. Transportation projects generally take several years to progress from the concept stage to construction. Consequently, they often remain active over several general fund cycles and do not follow the general fund annual budget appropriations timeline. With an established fund, which is separate from the general fund, the transportation projects can be advanced at a time, at any time during the year as the need arises. Also, since federal or state funding allocation opportunities can emerge at any time during the year, it is important to have a ready reserve of funds to be able to commit to county projects when such opportunities arise in order to leverage local funds. The Capital Transportation Fund is intended to provide funds for transportation projects to help further the mobility goals of the county's comprehensive transportation plan or projects that are deemed to serve an economic development purpose as well as fund necessary safety improvements. First, transportation projects that have a state or federal fund uh, allocation and require local match 
Two, to supplement funding for transportation projects with local funding sources, such as SPLOST, developer contribution for grants. Third, needed safety improvements to the county's roadway system. And fourth, other transportation projects with of smaller scale that can be funded entirely by the Capital Transportation Fund. Because allocation of funds may be necessary at any time during the year, it is important to maintain a substantial, uncommitted balance. Also, as projects progress towards construction and project details are refined, additional funding may be needed to advance the projects to the construction phase. Use of the CTF funds for projects should adhere to the following general guidelines. One, may be used to fund transporta transportation projects that are in the county's adopted comprehensive transportation plan. Two, funds may also be allocated to transportation projects that have been vetted through review by the Board of Commissioners Transportation Oversight Committee, have subs subsequently been re recommended for inclusion by the committee, and are added to the program through formal action by the Board of Commissioners. Third, ideally, the Capital Transportation Fund should receive periodic allocations from the general fund or other sources in order to maintain a minimum uncommitted balance of $2 million at the beginning of each calendar year as part of the annual budget appropriations. And fourth, when the uncommitted balance in the Capital Transportation Fund falls <coughs> below $1 million, a recommendation for additional funding should be made to the Board of Commissioners by the, board, uh, by the Transportation Committee. And, and uh, the items uh, related to specific projects uh, for, uh, should be used for roads and, and transit and mobility projects, infrastructure, construction, and upgrades, including but not limited to new and existing roads, bridges, intersections, and right-of-way acquisition, accessories and amenities included but not limited to Two, sidewalks, street lights, signaling devices, traffic counting structures, facilities included but not limited to administrative offices, operations and maintenance shops, traffic management, training centers, customer service, and passenger rider amenities. Technology including but not limited to hardware, software, safety and security devices and programs, real-time vehicle location and automated data gathering system vehicles and associated equipment, studies, surveys, and planning necessary to advance transportation and transit programs and projects. And last, promotional and marketing activities designed to directly improve citizen awareness of transportation and traffic programs and projects. Thank, thank you for that first reading um, of this consideration. Commissioner Walker, um, again, you want to close this out with us? And I, and I guess to that point, because it's the first reading, we'll have time to sort of reflect this because I have not read this version of it. I, nor, I, nor I. And uh, I would not be uh, opposed to a, a follow-up special call meeting before the end of the year or if the chairman's uh, desire, it could be deferred to the, to the new commissioner. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do, uh, just so you know where I am at this point in time, uh, going to the uh, first page, uh, item three, uh, I've done just a little bit of editing right there in terms of uh, wording, but where I'm, I'm really focusing on is item four, uh, and it, it would seem to me more when the uncommitted fund balance in the CTF uh, fund falls below, we've already mentioned a, a, a maintaining a, a minimum balance of two million. It would seem to me that uh, if we're talking, it should, it should talk about falling below the two million. Uh, not the one million. Now, having said that, uh, it, it's obviously if you're, let's say you're at, at five hundred thousand uh, dollars, it would be foolhardy to say, okay, by the next budget cycle, we need to put a hundred, uh, one point five million in this to bring us up to the two million dollar. I would suggest some sort of uh, replenishing schedule, uh, <coughs> to, you know, to be discussed. But I think we need to target. Uh, replenishing to two million, uh, as opposed to having a trigger point at one million. I think the two million is, is just—it's our constant target right there. Uh, and then, again, if you would uh, humor me uh, for roads and transit mobility on the uh, on the blue page uh, for further discussion, 
if you would number those items one through seven, and, and I can tell you which ones I would support. Uh, one through seven. Okay. Uh, well, let me just tell you what I don't support. Uh, I don't support item three, which is facilities, including but not limited to administrative offices. I don't support item five, which is vehicles and associated equipment. And I do not support seven, promotional and marketing activities that's coming out of the, the uh, CTF. Uh, one, two, four, and six, uh, in my opinion, are to the core of what the CTF should be about. I yield back to the chairman. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let's make sure we, Jessica, did you get those comments of record? Yes, sir. And, and, and again, I, I, I sum my comments up of capital, capital related services. Um, I, I, I think there is a, the element of grants that require design work, consulting work, to, like, well, how will we fund that? Um, they should be kept together. Um, I, I, I'm always careful about splitting funds. Um, and so, it's something I need to think about. I mean, I have not read this yet. Yes. I, I, I want to really reflect on this to, to keep things um, together, um, but, but duly noted. Um, and let's just leave it at that um, mm -hmm. on this first reading. Um, Mark? I think it was very good. I mean, it was, yeah. it was a very good write-up. It was actually very good. And mm -hmm. so that's like, let me be thoughtful about my commentary. But I just want for the record, I thought um, I came in with the expectation of capital and capital-related services. But this is way more detailed, so let me think about it. Um, we'll see mm -hmm. if that would be okay, and we'll come back around later. Um, Miguel Valentin, Director, is there anything else that needs to come before this committee? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, County Administrator, is there anything we must move on, but is there anything you would like to say? No, sir. Okay. okay. Gary? Okay. I'm good. Okay. If there's nothing else that needs to come before this meeting, Commissioner Walker, you get the last word. Are you good? I'm good. Okay. Let this meeting stand adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. That was sufficient. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.